So here's, here's the formulas again that I talked about in the previous video. Okay, so if, for example, you borrow $250,000 a year, paid it back in 10 years at 11% per annum, what is the future value payment? Let's uh, figure that out. So the, the circle factor label just says, well, what do you not know? There are four things. So what is it you're trying to find? And how do you invert the formulas and things like that? So I'm going to flip over to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, we're back, and and here's the Excel spreadsheet. So, I'm got, I got it set up. Principal two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Rate eleven point five percent. That we write as a decimal, not as a percentage. Remember. And then I just set this cell, the first cell, at time equals zero. This is our loan value. This much. At after one year, this is the end of the first year, from time zero to time one. Zero to one year is the first year. One to two is the second year, and so forth. The interest or interest that's going to be owed is 11.5% of this current value. So write my formula. So that's interest that, that's going to be owed. So now the, the current value is going to be at the end of the first year. Instead of 250000 it's going to be 250000 plus the interest that you owe. There we go. And, and we can just keep going like that. I can copy this formula down to the rest of the cells. Copy so that we can figure out what we owe at the end of 10 years or 20 or something like that. That is one of the beauties of Excel is that we can just copy and paste formulas. And now we find out we're going to owe $742,486.71 at the end of 10 years. Okay. Um, there it is. There's, now you can plug, it in, plug and chug the numbers like this also if you want to. The Excel spreadsheet is more the way a bank does it. They'll, they'll show a statement and they'll show you deposits and, and withdrawals and they'll go through, they'll just show you line by line what happens after each one. And that's what they're showing you. They're showing you this information and how much interest you're going to get at a particular time. And my Excel spreadsheet's kind of slowing down, so I'll go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So, so try this problem. The should you accept ten thousand dollars now or paid at this schedule? That you get zero now, you get four thousand the end of year one, five thousand the end of year two, and ten thousand the end of year three. 8% uh, interest, by the way. So uh, we're going to get 11,000. And we're going to get more, but it's going to come later. We're going to get 10,000 now or 11,000 later. Okay. So let's go, go figure that out. You guys figured it out. I'm going to put it in the Excel spreadsheet. This is how, how it works out. Uh, all I did was I took the previous spreadsheet. I just put $10,000 in here, different interest rate, 0.08, and all the formulas still worked. And this is end of year one, end of year two, end of year three. Um, and yeah end of year three two thousand dollars at the end of year three so we only have to go up to three years 
So this is this is the number. This is the analysis. If you get ten thousand dollars now, how much will you have at the end of three years at eight percent interest? To do the you're gaining income throughout that time. This is how you'd modify that previous table. These columns here are the same as they were before. No, no change. Current value changes a little. The current value then is the sum of these two of these two. And the current value here is going to be last year's current value plus interest on last year's current value plus any income you gain this year. And that's going to be your new value. And of course, because you didn't have any money at time zero, you're not going to have any interest at the end of year one. But you will have interest at the end of year two. Now, I need to copy this formula down to the other two rows. And we have, we get 12,065. So you are slightly better off getting the money up front instead of spread out. Instead of more money spread out, you're better off taking the $10,000 up front. And I'll exit that. We'll, we got another slideshow coming up. This is actually in two, two shows. Now we're going to consider a slightly more complex problem that is to replace equipment by borrowing $100,000 at 8% for eight years. And... You have the sales and salvage and so forth. Let's see, did I have anything on the previous slide? I don't think I did. There we go. There. Versus leasing. Are you better off buying or leasing? And here's the fact for leasing. So we're going to do an economic analysis. I'm going to show you how to make this chart after I go to Excel. And this chart was produced in Excel, by the way. So I'll show you that in just a second. Here's all the data inserted into an Excel spreadsheet. So for year zero to one, we're borrowing $100,000, but we're immediately turning around purchasing something with it. So this is a wash. You might, you might not even include these two at all. It'll make very little difference to the analysis. So sales per year, Maintenance charges if you buy. Uh, salvage, that means how much you can sell the used equipment for. Payments, how much you have to pay the bank to borrow this much money. Versus the lease option, how much does the lease cost per year. Setup, sales, and then service charges over the time. So let's see how you construct a cash flow diagram. So let me just remind you, there it is. So how do you construct that in Excel? Once you've got your your data set up, column and then how much per year, the beginning of year zero, $100,000, at the beginning of year two or the end of year one. That's why it says zero to one here, end of year one, beginning of year two, end of year one, and so forth. Just be careful of your dates. When are you going to say, okay, these sales accrue? We're going to add the sales into the analysis after the first year sales. So, the, so you wouldn't have anything here because this is time equals zero. At time zero, all you're going to do is, is borrow and buy. At time equal one, you're going to say, okay, all the sales we had in the first year, we're going to credit it at the end of the first year or at the beginning of the second and so forth with these other quantities. You kind of got to be careful with your timelines. That's all I'm saying. Let's, let's do the chart now. 
cash flow diagram is a piece of cake once you've got this laid out. You just do insert a column chart. You can choose 3D. You want a stacked column. Okay, I'll just do 3D. There it is. And except for the fact this looks a little prettier, it's identical to what we did before. This is 2D and the colors are different. You can change the colors on Excel, things like that. So that's a piece of cake. The second one, very similar. There's a cash flow diagram for that. And we can create the diagram real easy. Just go down here to this other data. Let me get this chart out of the way. You just do the same thing. And the stacking column means you add up everything for that year. You add everything across rows for that year. So there's the second one, if you lease. Oops, there we go. There's the lease. Now, then the question is, but th that doesn't really tell us if we should lease or which should we buy. We can see year by year what's going to happen from these two charts, but we can't we can't really tell if we should lease or buy. So uh, it's hard to get an estimate, and it's it's good it's it's easy to get things wrong relying on the graphic. It's good to know how your money is going to flow. Will you have enough money? If you if you only have twenty thousand dollars, you better lease. Um, you might not be able to get a bank loan for a hundred thousand dollars. Whatever whatever the case may be. So um, they help help you know what you, what your bank account is going to look like over time. That's that's the purpose of the cash flow diagrams. But we need to convert them to future worth. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to take this cash flow diagram and we're going to convert it. We're going to take this money here. What's it worth at this point in time? What's it worth at this point in time? And it's a lot like compound interest. And we're going to get into that in the next video.